Tucker Carlson's brand is pretty clear to anyone who's paying close attention. He will deny white supremacy in the United States. That's really a huge part of his brand while also saying something that has a kernel of truth to it. Something that maybe appeals to populist sensibilities in the United States. And in this particular case, he decided to not only deny white supremacy, which is a trend with his show, but also shockingly criticize US imperialism, which is something that Tucker Carlson has been in favor of throughout his entire media career. Now, let's listen to what he had to say in one of his latest segments. Does anyone in power really think something called white supremacy is the single greatest threat America faces? No, of course not, no one thinks that. Susan Rice knows it isn't true, so does Barack Obama. So do all of the other architects of this particular lie. They made it up in the first place, so of course they know precisely how false it really is. They may be liars, but they're not delusional. In real life, they understand perfectly well what actually threatens America, they've seen it up close. It's the culture that produced them. It's the decadent rich people from their class at Harvard. It's the gender studies department at Cornell. It's the cat cafes in Austin and Asheville. It's the Monday editorial meetings at the Atlantic Magazine, where David Frum is treated like an important intellectual rather than some dopey middle-aged Canadian Twitter celebrity whose life goal is to force America into yet another unwinnable pointless war. Those are the people who actually detest the country. They're the ones who are working through the night to destroy it. They're the people who are committed to and in the process of excusing violence. So if you wanted to save America, these are the people you'd be worried about. They make the Iranian nuclear program look like nothing. Oh, is, is Tucker Carlson concerned about unwinnable, pointless wars? Because I'm old enough to remember what his rhetoric was like back in 2003 when the Bush administration was considering, at that point, they were considering a preemptive war in Iraq. I didn't hear any protests coming from the likes of Tucker Carlson, heir to the Swanson wealth. And now all of a sudden, he, of course, he's very on brand when it comes to denying the very real situation that we're dealing with in this country and we have been dealing with for centuries regarding white supremacy. On the other hand, he's now pretending like, no, 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 I've always been against US imperialism. But of course, as we know, what really gets Tucker Carlson so angry is the video that was just released by the CIA in an attempt to recruit new people, new agents to the agency. And so he refers to the CIA as the, you know, as some woke organization. He doesn't like the language that they use in their recent ad. We talked about this on the show and we explained the problems that we had with the framing in that ad as well. But of course, it came from a true, a genuine anti-US imperialist perspective. Tucker Carlson doesn't fall under that category at all. He has been very much in favor of the United States invading countries for useless forever wars. But before we get to the details of that, because I wanna make my case and I wanna provide evidence for that case, let's first focus on what he has to say about white supremacy in the United States, because he claims that it's non-existent. He claims that it's completely made up by the Democratic Party, by the Obama administration, by intelligence officials during the Obama administration. It's completely made up, completely made up. As if we haven't had several mass shootings in this country that were specifically motivated by white supremacy. One of them was in El Paso not too long ago, when an individual walks into a Walmart and opens fire, killing dozens of people because he has a problem with immigration from Latin American countries. He'll deny that that has anything to do with white supremacy. Christopher Ray, FBI director, has said over and over again that one of the top threats domestically right now is the rise of right wing extremism. In fact, you know, it's one thing for me to just say it. I like to actually show the audience evidence of the case that I'm trying to make. So let's take a look at this video. Police in Texas are investigating a possible link between a 21 year old white male suspected of killing at least 20 people inside an El Paso Walmart and an anti immigrant manifesto shared online minutes before the shooting. The four page document posted to the message board 8chan calls the Walmart attack quote a response to the Hispanic invasion of Texas. 
That possible motive may link the Walmart massacre to a series of attacks by suspected white nationalists in the last year, targeting immigrants, Jews, and Muslims. Racially motivated violent extremism, specifically of the sort that advocates for the superiority of the white race, uh, is a persistent, evolving threat. It's the biggest chunk of our racially motivated violent extremism cases, for sure. Uh, and, in, and racially motivated violent extremism is the biggest chunk of our domestic terrorism portfolio, if you will, overall. I will also say that the same group of people we're talking about have been responsible for uh, the most lethal attacks uh, over the last, uh, say, decade. Jews will not replace us was the chant in Charlottesville in August of 2017. And just the other day, the president essentially Joel. said that they were they were fair. And we have seen a spike in anti-Semitic acts in this country. The Anti-Defamation League, uh, the FBI have all shown that uh, anti-Semitism is on the rise in the United States. And I don't think we can say that it's divorced from the political rhetoric that we see right now. To deny that white supremacy exists in America is absolutely ridiculous. And Tucker Carlson knows it, he's a white supremacist himself. But this is the type of red meat that he loves to throw out to his audience because it's his bread and butter, really. What else would Tucker Carlson talk about? He pretends to want to hold corporations accountable for their unfair behavior, but does he actually propose incre increasing their taxes? Does he actually propose regulations? No, he doesn't do any of that. He offers all sorts of disgusting denials of white supremacy and then couples it with popular talking points regarding corporations and in this case, US imperialism, which is is something that Americans are tired of across the board. You'll see Republican voters fight back against any notion of engaging militarily with Iran, for instance. When the Trump administration was considering military action against Iran, his own supporters spoke out against that, showing that Republicans do not have an appetite in engaging militarily the way that we had during the Bush years, the way that we had during the Obama years. And by the way, we continue to engage in militaristically across the globe, certainly with our own involvement in Yemen. The fact that we're increasing hostilities with China by arming Japan and India. I mean, the list goes on and on. I mean, these actions are already or have been taking place. But make no mistake, Tucker Carlson has loved the forever wars. He has supported the forever wars. He certainly has never spoken out against them until he realized, oh, maybe I can weave this into my ridiculous populist rhetoric in an effort to really stand out and appeal to the very people who might want to vote for me when I run for president in 2024. But do not be mistaken by who Tucker Carlson really is. Now, he's also right though in calling out David Frum. David Frum was the Bush speechwriter. In fact, back in 2002, when Bush gave his speech on foreign policy, this is before the preemptive war in Iraq, you might have remembered the phrase axis of evil. And that was a phrase coined by David Frum, someone who was also very supportive of the war in Iraq. And the axis of evil referred to the countries that were the biggest threat to United States national security, Iraq, Iran, North Korea. The warmongering rhetoric coming from the Bush administration was significant. They needed to manufacture consent for the wars that we're still engaged in. And so David Frum was part and parcel of that. He helped to craft the narrative. He helped to convince Americans that we absolutely needed to engage in that preemptive war, that we absolutely needed to you know, ward off this dangerous threat to US national security. And so Tucker Carlson's right about from. But again, let's not forget who Tucker Carlson was. And maybe this compilation will remind you. Rock is a crappy place filled with a bunch of, you know, yeah. semi literate primitive monkeys. Keep but I just have zero sympathy for them or their culture, a culture where people just don't use toilet paper or forks. Hey, I gotta, I, I, and, and the way they treat women, you know, I, I agree with you. Their, their culture is, is, but you're in their homeland and you're over there as an American who they hate and they want nothing more than the Americans off of their soil. So they're yeah, not going to play games. Second we, I mean, they can just shut the f up and obey, is my view.
How could you salvage Iraq at this point? I don't, you know, it's beyond our control. I mean, if somehow the Iraqis decided to behave like human beings or something. He, he'd need to say, look, I'm a bigot, okay? I'm a bigot. I don't like Islamic extremists. Like, if you are really heavily into Islam, I really, I, I'm sorry, I just don't, I don't care for you that much. And I don't care what that sounds like. You can call me a racist. You can come where the f you want. For Tucker Carlson to try to re- I guess to launder his reputation as someone who was an opponent of these wars is ridiculous. And he knows that video exists. He knows exactly how supportive he was. And of course, we're gonna bring these videos up and we're gonna call him out. It, it is fascinating though that he failed to provide a single example of how he differs or deferred from David Frum at the time. It's because those examples don't exist. He was in favor of the Bush administration, he was in favor of these wars. And as you heard from the language in that compilation video, he's also very much in favor of white supremacy. So while he denies it, there are countless examples of him spouting white supremacist talking points on his show and on other people's shows as he called in. Now let's get to David Frum because he did not like the fact that he was mentioned in Tucker Carlson's segment. And I wanna be clear, there are no winners here. Tucker Carlson, clearly awful and a liar, but David Frum, not a good guy, doesn't deserve cookies, doesn't deserve credit. And so he responded by tweeting this, Carlson, Carlson has some abusive personal comments about me two thirds of the way through this complicated excuse and justification for the January 6th attack on the US Capitol. Anti-vax, pro-insurrection, quite a combo. As to the abuse, I'll say this, I've known Carlson for more than 20 years. We were colleagues at the Weekly Standard in the 1990s. I appeared fairly often on his MSNBC show in the 2000s. We were Washington friends, we had lunch, he came to parties at my house. And by the way, I totally believe him on that. But as we've learned with Liz Cheney in the House, there's really no loyalty among Republicans when people's political careers are on the line. But Frum continues and says this, all this was during the period of the Afghanistan and Iraq wars. Carlson now proclaims his fierce opposition to both. But when it mattered, when his already influential voice could have made a difference to the national decision, he was a ferocious advocate of both wars. He's right, so far so good, but here's where David Frum loses me. And I think loses a lot of other people as backlash to this tweet would show you. I supported the wars too, of course, but Carlson's support was way more outspoken, radical, disdainful, and frankly, bloodthirsty. His radio broadcast description of Iraqis as uh, primitive monkeys resurfaced in 2018. And then he goes on, but I, I wanna focus on that tweet. Because when I say that there are no winners in this story, I really mean it. What Frum is essentially saying is, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I supported the war too, of course. But I'm better because I did it politely. I'm better because I did it in this professional context of speech writing, where I helped the President of the United States craft this narrative meant to terrify Americans and convince them in supporting these wars. That's what David Frum did. He gets no credit, he gets no cookies. The, the polite rhetoric he might use is, is no better than someone like Tucker Carlson supporting the war in the way that he did. Because the end result was the same, whether you're polite or ferocious in your support for the war. At the end of the day, it was support for that awful war that we still find ourselves in today. And David Frum isn't necessarily completely telling the truth in that tweet. Because I did manage to dig up some old interviews that he did. This one from 2004, where he was talking about Iraq, where he was talking about the notion of diplomacy. And here's what diplomacy meant to him. I, I think the United States is entitled and is right to be stern. I mean, that like, look, we're not, we don't have one answer for every problem. There are a lot of problems with the, where the correct approach is the soft approach. Um, there are a lot of times when you have to woo and placate. But just as it's wrong to say the answer is always force, it is wrong to say the answer is never force. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes, uh, uh, sometimes force or the threat of it is necessary. Diplomacy 
in my view, is not the art of smoothing relations. Diplomacy is the art of getting your way through words. And sometimes, sometimes the right words are please, please, please. And sometimes the right words are do it again and we'll knock your teeth out. Mm -hmm. His idea of diplomacy is using words like do it again or we'll knock your teeth out. Not my idea of diplomacy, not, not what most Americans would think of when they consider diplomacy as a way of persuading other countries to work together with us collaboratively. David Frum certainly was not some dove when it came to US foreign policy, neither was Tucker Carlson. This story was full of honestly a bunch of losers, a bunch of liars and men who really deserve no cookies. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.